Ephesians 6. And um, we'll put that on the screen, too, where everybody can see it. And uh, I, I want us to, um, we need to read these scriptures just sometimes looking right at them in our Bible. We need to just, just put these in front of our eyes, you know. Do not let it depart from your eyes. There's something about putting your eyes on the scripture itself. Listen to what it says in Ephesians 6.10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord. So he's talking to the brethren here. He's talking to those who know Jesus. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. Stand, therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod, with the preparation of the gospel of peace, and above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Now, Spiritual warfare is brutal. You have to remember that. Warfare in itself is brutal. But spiritual warfare is brutal. You think natural warfare is brutal, and it is. But I dare say not many believers have ever heard a soul scream. It's, it's a brutal thing. Spiritual warfare is a brutal thing. And natural warfare, there are, there are stories of people that, are in, that have been through war and have been through, you know, a member of our own team. Uh, Ronnie was in, in uh, Vietnam and, and fought in active combat through that. And there are, there are friends that I know and I've talked to that were they're in situations that were just absolutely Brutal. I remember one friend of mine, I, I was listening to him tell one time, and, and he was the only survivor of a unit, you know. And he, he was trying to drag men up the hill to get them going. And, and I saw him one day. We were, we were, I was on his camper with him. He, he had done a meeting and spoke at this meeting. And I went out there and uh, after it was over to visit with him a minute, and he didn't have a shirt on. And he wouldn't, he, he cooked his own meals, you know, in his motor home. And he asked me to come in. He said, come on up here, come on in. And when he turned his back, up his back looked like quarters. Just marks in his skin where he had been shot. And he was one of the only survivors, and he was a, a presidential advisor on some of the veterans' things. And, and he, he was, he telling the story, he was trying to drag the men, and because whoever st- Whoever stopped was dead. I mean, you know, I mean, it's like the one on, was it Omaha Beach? One man said, he said, there's two kinds of people on this beach, those that are moving and those that are dead. And so he was dragging this one man. This was during Vietnam, and he was trying to drag him up. And the man said, I'm shot. I'm shot. He said, my friend looked at him and said, we're all shot. Keep moving. So natural warfare is brutal. I remember they were telling stories about was in a in a unit that would go out and they would drop them out and the enemy thought this was during Vietnam also and they thought that they these were ghost people and they were they were doing this and and they would take our men and come in at night and remove the the wounded and the dead and replace them with fresh men and and the enemy thought they they couldn't be killed and so they left him out there so long that I remember him talking to me about it 
he took one of the dead enemies that had been killed and he drug him over and set him up against a tree and took his sea rations and he would eat and talk to him and then he fed him a bite. Natural warfare is brutal. It's brutal on the mind. It's brutal on the constitution of a man or a woman. I remember, uh, I think it was my grandpa, was tell, he was in World War II in the Navy, and he was telling a story, and they tell this story, that when they hit this certain beach, and he watched, and there was a man there, and I don't know if he saw it or they told it, but he, he was in World War II, and when he saw all the shooting and all the killing, he just stopped. He broke crying and turned around and sat down on the edge of the beach and just started throwing rocks in the water. It snapped because it's so brutal. Well, the natural world is like a, it's like a play out of the spirit. What's going on in the spirit around you. And when, world, when war is going on in the natural you don't even realize the war that's in the spirit happening around. And spiritual warfare is just as brutal. It's more than just what we make it out to be. We talk about warfare, we play war songs, and we have this, this spiritual warfare going on, and people think it's all dancing and shouting and, and all of this. Spiritual warfare becomes brutal, especially when the souls and, of nations are at stake. Because multiple thousands upon thousands of lives depend on what's done in the spirit. At the same time, World War II was being fought. A lot of people don't realize this, but people became allies in World War II that you would have never dreamed would have been allies. And people joined the enemy that, that maybe you wouldn't have thought they would have joined. But in World War II, it's called the greatest generation in this nation, the World War II generation. But what you may not realize is that the throne of Satan that was in Pergamos, the one spoken of in Revelation had been raised up and completed. And when it was completed, the throne of Satan, where Jesus speaks of and calls it the, where Satan's seat is, in, in Revelation where he says, my faithful martyr Antipas was offered, that throne, the throne of Zeus, the throne of Satan that had been in disarray was unearthed and put back into position and built back and it was completed, and right as it was completed and placed in Germany, Hitler was born in Austria. And the throne of Satan was raised up in Germany and moved to Berlin. When Hitler made his speeches on the stage at Nuremberg and uttered the words, final solution to, to kill and annihilate all the Jews, when he said this, he had had a man named Albert Sphere design him a platform to speak from, and he went to uh, the throne of Satan in Berlin and designed his platform after the throne of Satan. And so from the throne of Satan... The madman, the, the, the people, the, the demon possessed, Adolf Hitler uttered the words from the throne of Satan, final solution. And so World War II wasn't just fighting in the natural, as brutal as it was. But also the throne of Satan had been raised. And there were principalities and powers. There was spiritual wickedness in the heavenlies that had taken over nations and the minds and the spirits and souls of men. And he was going to bring about the annihilation of the Jewish people. And so there was a heavy war going on in the spirit. And people like Billy Sunday and people, all the evangelists and all those that were raised up in those days to preach. We're fighting the war in the spirit while it was going on in the natural. And so we were fighting the two fronts at the same time, and so it is now. There are, there are spirits and demonic forces arrayed against us in this time. 
And it's not just raised against America, but America is a doorway to all of you around the world that brings freedom and, and pipes, beacons of hope and light and prosperity and all of this. And so now the war in the spirit has, has come to a place. And if you say, well, how did it, how, why is it so intense, Brother Robin, Why? Because when Barack Obama started running for president and the Democrat Party, the most wicked group of people you've ever seen who can annihilate children in this nation by the tune of 3,500 a day. And worldwide, I looked yesterday, it's over 40 million since January. Since January in the world. And you're looking at people. You're, you're, you're talking about people in this world who can manufacture a virus and just destroy people or make them bow. In 2008, when he began to run for president and his people put him up and threw Jezebel off the wall and threw him up and propped him up there, what you may not know is that they designed a platform on the highest part of America that they could put it was in Mile High Stadium in Colorado. Invesco Field, is it called, Robbie? On Invesco Field on the 50-yard line, they erected the throne of Satan. It was the duplicate of the throne of Zeus, throne of Satan in Berlin. And he stood there on that platform and began to address the people. And he exalted himself above the stars and stripes of the flags around him. And Isaiah 14 began to be fulfilled in the natural. I'll exalt myself above the stars of God, Satan said. And Obama appeared in the, in the movie, the miniseries in the 13th. And they showed Satan in the middle of the desert when Jesus approached him, and it was Obama. So we're talking about the same throne that's been erected, the same thing that has come on the scene, and now it beats at the doors of America. It beats at the doors of the free world. It beats at the doors of all those who are born again, and the ravening wolves are standing at the door, beating on the door, trying to get us to open the door of freedom and let them in so they can destroy it all. But I say nay. Nay, they'll not destroy it all as long as you know how to fight in the spirit. If you can defeat it in the spirit, the natural has no choice but line up. And just like Hitler, just like Nero, just like all the others, and just like Stalin, just like all the others, just like Paul Potts, just like all the others that came, they will go to dust when it's one in the spirit. So spiritual warfare is the brutality of all war. It's brutal. And the reason a lot of Christians can't fight in spiritual warfare is because they have no settling in their spirits. They have no, no constitution within themselves. They run from church to church to church for years and years and years. And then when something was raised up for them to actually congregate in, they removed the power from the people. And said, this is the new church. The church without prophecy. The church without tongues. The church with only in back rooms on midweek services can anyone even think about giving a prophetic word and yet it's never given because it's discouraged. And now we're expected to win this fight for the free world, not just America. You have to understand something. There's a fight for Australia. There's a fight for China. There's a fight for Japan. There's a fight for England. There's a fight for Norway. There's a fight for all the nations. 
because God is a planning on having revival in all of them. And there's a fight for this. And now you see what Abel was talking to Cain about. It's at the door. You could rule over it if you will. But the church has ill-equipped its body to fight. They don't know anything about spiritual warfare. God raised up prophets and he raised up Bible teachers so that the word, the sword of the spirit could come together and win this in the last times. When Brother Hagin started proclaiming, you can have what you say, Mark 11, 23, 24. Brother Copeland started coming on the scene because the body of Christ whined and cried and, and laid on the floor and cried because they had no prosperity and had to live in poverty while they watched the gambling casinos and everything else flourish like a tree. And they cried and they cried and they cried. So the Lord said, I will raise up a man. I'll raise up someone. And his name was Kenneth Copeland. And I'll, I'll, I'll put in him the laws of my prosperity to prosper a man. To prosper you that don't depend on a Babylonian government. That will prosper you. And he started teaching us, teaching us, teaching us. And people like Oral Roberts came before him to teach us seed faith. And it all came and came. And the body of Christ got up from their crying on the floor and attacked the messengers of God and couldn't prosper and people come on now they, they say, hear me say something about that and then they try to attack me or they'll say we love brother Robin we hate these other people that's why you're poor and broke that's why you don't know how to fight God sends a gift and we throw it back. Don't you remember the parables when the Lord talked this? Jesus said himself, he said, I will send to the husbandman, those in charge of my vineyards. I'll send to them my servants to teach them and to collect what's mine, what I've put in them. And so they decided they wanted to own the vineyards, not the Lord's way, their way. So they beat some servants. He sent more and they killed them. He sent, finally he said, I'll send my son. And you know what they said? They had their own ideas of how to run a vineyard now. They had their own ideas. And they said, look, here's the heir. Let's kill him and we'll seize on the vineyard. So they vote out the power. They slaughter the prosperity message. They th throw out healing. They throw out God's able and willingness to do something. They begin to say, this is not right. What's happened to churches? They got their own ideas of how to run the vineyard. They said, seize on this. Seize on it and we'll own it. So they developed seeker-friendly atmospheres to where everybody's taught one thing and not allowed to think. And there is no power being spoken of because the Holy Ghost has been tied and gagged in a corner. And he's back there tied up and locked in a small cell group somewhere. And when some prophet comes in to visit the, the meeting, nobody trembles. Nobody speaks anything because uh, ushers are standing there waiting to hush them. And then we talk of spiritual warfare. Well, I've got news for you. Spiritual warfare is more than speaking of water references in a song. Spiritual warfare is deeper and, and bigger than just singing a song that has, uh, you know, that I'm, I'm foot sore and poorly shod. And I, or, or put it in modern terms, I was about to drown and Jesus reached down and I'm on the water, but I'm floating with my hair wet and I'll never forget the wetness of the water. I'll always know the water. I drink the water. I bathe in the water. I move across the water and when I can't hold up and I begin to cry and weep and sink this has no this is not spiritual warfare it's spiritual surrender and if you're not fighting you are retreating my friends 
There is no, there is no middle ground. Spiritual warfare is brutal. Oh yeah, but I'm hurting. My mind is so bogged down. Really? Picture Jesus with the thorns on his head and blood running down his face. And the scripture says you haven't yet resisted unto blood. Him in the garden resisting to the point he's sweating blood. Have you done that? Well, I don't know why I can't stand up in this time, Brother Robin. It's because you were taught by anemic churches. And so you say, why are you saying this? Because the wolves are at the door now. It's very urgent in my spirit today. We are approaching crunch time. And if I didn't love you, I would not tell you. Spiritual warfare is brutal. War in general is brutal. But I dare say, not many believers have ever heard a soul scream. They have never heard the man from the wounds they have suffered in the spirit. Or as they scream, the scream of the spirit dying as it's dragged into hell. They've never heard that. They've never heard that as a spirit is dying. No one knows how a spirit dies because they are eternal. They never cease to exist. There is something worse than death, than physical death. It's to hear a soul scream and to hear a spirit as they begin to open their mouth in one last eternal scream as they're being dragged into hell. And they can't ever escape. Not many people have ever heard or seen such a thing as that. No wonder Lester Summerall, when he saw that, and he saw that vision, and he saw that as they were the crush of humanity was driving people off into hell, and he, he cried and wept all night on that old schoolroom floor until his white suit was just completely covered in dirt and mud. Because people have not ever heard souls scream like that. Unless God has privileged you and opened your eyes like Brother Summerall. Spiritual warfare is brutal. And the enemy gives no quarter, no respite, none. He won't give you any quarter. We need to understand this. If he gets you down, he will not give you a quarter. That means he won't back up and say, I'll wait till you get up and we'll start again. He will never do such a thing. If he gets you down, he is as unrelenting as hell itself. They are bombarding the gates of our great nation to breach the Constitution. And to erase the words of the Declaration of, of Independence. And the pictures they paint from the minds of every generation. A breach is coming. Will you be ready? I heard this this morning. A breach is coming. Will you be ready? Once the breach is made... The expanse must be filled. Once the wall breaks in one place, the expanse must be filled. When the enemy makes a breach in the wall, there must be enough soldiers to run into that breach and fill it. Ecclesiastes declares what has been will be again, and God requires that which is past. Satan fights in cycles, never new tactics. This is why he must destroy the knowledge of the past 
so no one can see the attack that's coming next. I need you to hear that. We saw movements in this country, probably around the world, I don't know, but I know in this nation, we saw movements, Black Lives Matter, who openly proclaimed we are Marxist. They said we're trained Marxist. I don't mean they just have a belief in Marxism. They were trained how to operate in that philosophy. They said we're community organizers and trained Marxist. When, when that fraudulent jackal ended up howling in the White House seat, what happened was is Black Lives Matter looked at him and said, you owe us. You owe us. As if they had done a service and worked for them on purpose. They said, you owe us. On their own websites, they declare they're Marxist. And America couldn't even see it. And so they started a movement to tear down statues and history. Good or bad makes no difference. Just tear it down. Musicians would change the names of their bands just because they didn't like it. Change the way they live because they didn't like it. Why would that, that uh, upset? Well, you know, it has references to this. Yes. So why would you tear it down? You don't want the next generation to see. Don't make that stupid mistake. We had that craziness going in this country. And tell your children, you see that right there? See that monument? See that statue? Let me tell you what that's about. Because what has been, the Bible says, will be again, and God requires that which is past. Satan fights in cycles. He must just erase the history of a people so that they can't see what he's attacking them with again. Who, who heard that? Well, you know, Brother Robin, you, you know, you're not, you're not thinking with a woke mind. Oh, yeah, I'm awake. I'm awake, all right. Just not to that crap. And I'm going to tell you something. The past, notice every movement has to erase the history of one. Why? Because the devil can only attack with that again. And if you don't know what ever happened, you can't defend it. Well, I got news for you. Erase the Declaration of Independence. You have to remember this. The first thing it says is, we hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men were created equal. Erase those words, and somebody's going to be a slave. We're not having slavery again in this country. I'm just telling you straight up, slavery is the biggest abomination that ever walked on this planet besides murdering children. And I'm going to tell you something. We're not going back to that mess. Not if I have anything to say about it. And I can say plenty in the spirit. Hallelujah. Somebody hear my heart or get mad at me or whatever you think you need to do. But I know good and well that I'm speaking to people who understand freedom inside here. Surely, I believe my partners are with me if no one else is. Now, we are going to win, so just get ready to win. They're bombarding the gates of our great nation to breach the Constitution. And to erase the words of the Declaration of Independence and the pictures that those words paint from the minds of every generation and from the eyes of the generations to come. A breach is coming. Will you be ready? Once the breach is made, the expanse must be filled. When the enemy makes a breach in the wall, there must be enough soldiers run into it to fill it. So Ecclesiastes, we talked about it, declares that what has been will be again and God requires that which is past. Satan fights in cycles, never new tactics. This is why I must destroy the knowledge of the past so that no one can see the attack that's coming in the future. 
Once he destroys the U.S. Constitution, it will be cremated and the ashes strewn everywhere or buried so that it never rise again. In doing so, he hopes, he hopes to institute slavery and enslave the world. And there is not enough time to raise up another Jefferson to write a new one. Fight for your constitution before no one even remembers what it was. So we must stand and fight. We're not just fighting for America. We're fighting for a free world. We're fighting for the free world. I want everybody that's in this nation hearing me right now, remember that. It's not just about this nation. This nation is the beacon of hope, of freedom. So to take it down, they figure the rest would be easy. And now you can hear as the missiles bombard the walls of freedom everywhere. Look at Australia. Look at how Australia has been attacked. Look at that. That's a great nation. And look at that nation, how they're bombarding the walls of freedom. A pastor dares say something, so they just arrest him. Look at Canada. Canada, my friends. Look at the great nation of Canada. And then they took a pastor because he dared stand up against a, a tyranny and drug him. We watched on national television, international television, as they stopped his car in the middle of the rain and drug the man of God out on his knees and arrested him. And wouldn't even give him a seat to sit down on for hours, two days, I think it was. And he laid on concrete and they treated him like he was some kind of prisoner of war. That's what he was. And we look at things like that. Fight, fight, fight. Hallelujah. God has a worldwide revival. He's about to break out hallelujah I'm not willing to give Australia up I'm not willing to give England up I'm not willing to give Norway Finland I'm not willing to give these nations up around the world I'm fighting for all of them every one of them Satan figures if America falls, Israel's easy. He might as well have his head in a pipe dreaming because that's a pipe dream. Now, does, it, does everybody hear my heart? I have no way of knowing what they're responding to here. Do, do you hear my heart? We must not forget so that the enemy can never do it again. I don't know what's hard to, to understand about that. Now, especially in this world, if this was a perfect world and there was no one, no enemies, no enemies to freedom, nobody who wanted to put you under their thumb, if there was nothing, no Hitlers left in the world and everything was in the millennial reign, you would have no need of reminders of all the mistakes you made in, in this, these nations. But I'm going to tell you something. You better remember what they tried to do. I never thought I would see in this nation where they would, they put curfews out in the streets of the United States. And we had to have cards to be out after a certain time because of some kind of pestilence that is the lowest killing machine on the entire rung of ladder of death. 98% cure rates and they lock you away and make you present a card. For what? For what? I don't see HIV cards. It's killing way more people. 
They don't want you free. They want you dead. As we approach an epic battle, one the likes have not been seen before. The courage that is required to walk up into the face of the enemy, of this enemy, only comes from faith in the word of the living God. That's it. So today, why am I telling you all this? Why did Brother Robin seem to go ballistic on everything? Because I hear them hitting the wall now. And when the breach happens, where will the soldiers be that will step up in the gap and fill it until we can build it back? And so they're going to have, if we're going to have an army like that, it's going to come from you. It's going to come from you all over the world, not just here, all over the world. Somehow or another, Hawaii is in my thinking right now. The state of Hawaii, I don't know why that just suddenly come up in my spirit, into my thinking. Hawaii must stand now. You must stand right now because you're about to be attacked in so many ways. You must stand. Stand up. What was that little song? Stand up, stand up for what you believe in. Yeah, stand up. God's the one to back you up. So we need to remember this. Something in Hawaii, something about Hawaii right now. I, I'm hearing that. I don't know exactly what that is. The Lord hasn't shown me. But something about Hawaii just came up floating up in my spirit. If there's anybody from Hawaii watching, maybe you can respond to this. But something is happening there. There is a fight going on there. There will be things in the natural, things in the spirit. Things are happening politically. Something is up there. And right now, Lord, we stand against any disaster in Hawaii. Lord, that if it's headed to that state, that the results will be minimum of what they face. And I give you praise and honor and glory for it. In Jesus' name, amen. If these wicked men and women are not removed from offices, they must be voted out and enforced to leave by the voting laws of states. There must be a, a stand up and get rid of wicked people out of these offices. What you're dealing with over most places in this country is demoralized minds trying to lead states and cities. They're demoralized. They came from a demoralized generation. And when they, then, the, then they, they funded the destabilization of a nation. And they've been trying to push this into crisis ever since. And now I hear, the, I hear them palmating the walls of the city. They've laid siege. Is, is it not a siege that's been laid? When the ships with all the supply chains to feed everybody in the world is backed up off the coast of one state and being enforced that they won't let them come and bring our food and supplies in? And blame it on uh, lack of workers on the docks? Or, or do they think that you're stupid as a bag of rocks? This is a siege been laid. Now they're beating the walls. The last stand is coming to finish this thing. Stand up. Stand up. Hallelujah. You're a child of God. You are the salt of the earth. And if the salt has lost its saltness, how can it be salted? In other words, salt is a preservative. We're the ones that preserve the earth. The earth, not just one nation. All nations. God created all men from one blood. That means that we all came from Adam and his wife. 
And deep down inside your DNA, everybody watching right now or listening has a freedom spark. That they know they're not supposed to be dominated. And it's the, because why? I want to tell you this before I close. The history of every man is inside every man. So the history of what Adam was before he sinned is inside. The memory of that is inside every man somewhere. So we, and when Jesus becomes the Lord of your life, suddenly all of the vision of what he was can be woke. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We got people watching today all over the world. Hallelujah. Yes, you can. The, the Lord showed me this. This was um, on December the 14th, which is, that's today, December the 14th. Wow. But it was in 2012. This was told to me. Okay. Uh, and it was a lady, and she had a two-year-old little girl. You'll remember it when I read it. And she was sitting in her mother's lap, and she asked her, she said, you want to sing a song? Because the little girl could, would sing. And the little girl began to sing, let the children go, let the children go. Mm. Open the door and let, let the, the children, children go. And wow. the mother was, uh, she was astounded because the baby was a little over two years old and began to sing that song, let the children go. And I believe that it, it's for now yeah. that that child was singing that. And it was on December the 14th of 2012, nine years ago, that this happened. And today's December the 14th, 2021. My goodness. A child said, yeah. let the children go. Open the door and let the children go. It goes to show you, doesn't it, that the fight... Yeah, 2012, and now it's 2021. It's the same numbers, just turned. This is, see, it goes to show you, doesn't it, that that is still a fight for the unborn. If you want to know the casualties of war, look at the world a meter. Everybody should do that. They should go to worldometer.com. Just punch that in, worldometer.com, and look at the numbers in real time, what's happening, and look at abortion. You want to know where the casualty is? Look at abortion. It's the number that, that's in one year, just from January, it's ranking over 40 million right now. Tell me another thing on the, on the death ladder that's killing that many people, even killing a, a, a fraction of that many people. Certainly not this, this uh, club they're using to beat everybody over the head with. Remember, and I, I know, I know, I need to close today. <laughs> but I'll tell you this. Remember something. When the first horseman of the apocalypse rides, the scripture says this. And that comes way before. It says that he has, a, he has a crown on his head, wearing a corona on his head, and a bow or a poison dart in his hand. And he, that's what it means, poison dart, and he goes out conquering and to conquer with this corona and this dart. Remember that. It said, because after him rides death and famine, and hell follows. Remember that. So you know what they're trying to ride right now to the four corners of the earth. Hallelujah. Well, it's been a big 11th hour today, hasn't it? It's been a powerful 11th hour today. It's been strong. It's been serious. But we had new music that made us smile. We had a groove in the spirit for a while. And the Lord has, has danced us right up to this place. You know, in the scripture in Isaiah, when it says, who will believe our report? And Isaiah 53, 
And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? He said, who will believe our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? In, in translation, it says, uh, whoever will believe this report, the dancing hand of the Holy Ghost will dance with you. In other words, whatever part of the report you'll believe, it says the Holy Ghost will take you by the hand and dance and twirl you through the scripture. So he danced us right up to this place. And we are ready to stand. So begin to worship God. I was telling uh, Steve Schultz yesterday, and we were talking about it, to bring your spirit online. Get your spirit activated. Bring it online. We were talking to the, the crowd yesterday, bring, to the people. Bring your spirit online by praying in the spirit. You say, well, I don't know how to do that. Well, the first thing you do is get born again. If you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life, Here's how you do that. You ready? Paul said, if you believe in your heart, God raised Jesus from the dead, and you'll confess with your mouth that he is your Lord, you shall be saved. So right now, why don't you just stop whatever you're doing, put down your potatoes, your peeling, whatever you're doing. Just stop right there. Pull over on the side of the road if you have to. Just, just park somewhere and just say this, Lord Jesus, I believe in my heart. God raised you from the dead. And I confess with my mouth that you are my Lord. Take my life and do something with it. From this day forward, I am yours. Hallelujah. Well, now, if you did that and you meant it, then you just became a child of God. Now, your spirit is alive to God. So now, you need to be able to access dunamis power. What is that? Well, the Bible said the Holy Ghost is like a dynamo. It produces this dunamis power. What is that talking about? It's talking about like a generator. The generator, the faster it turns, the more power it comes out. The more power it turns out, the faster it turns. And it just keeps increasing and increasing and increasing until it's what engineers would call bootstrapping power. It means it gets to moving so fast, more power, more power, faster, faster, more power. It begins to be so big that it produces enough strength, bootstrapping strength. Imagine being able to reach down to your boots, take hold of your straps, and you're strong enough to pick yourself up off the ground. That's bootstrapping power. And only the Holy Ghost can produce that inside a person. So how do you do that? Well, you say... Lord Jesus, baptize me in the mighty Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in other tongues as the Spirit tells me what to say. Thank you, Jesus, for baptizing me in fire and the Holy Ghost. Now start thanking him for it. And then you'll start hearing these sounds inside you. And when you do speak them out of your mouth, come on, don't stop. Stir it up. Brito coso calebrande e zale e coristo brondigele ere emor. And then you start bringing your spirit online. And when that comes online like that, hell don't have enough power to stop you. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Well, it's been a good 11th hour today. And we want to, uh, people say, well, 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 prophet, you're, you're wild. Yes. What, what, what did you come to see? A reed shaken in the wind? No, no, no. It's time to be fiery and to speak the truth in love. Hallelujah. I have no malice toward anybody, but I do not like the devil. And he don't like me either. And he don't like you. Amen. Come on, Krista, and receive our offering today. If the people would like to give, let's certainly give them opportunity to give. We have any praise reports? Do we have any? Well, come and let's do that while Krista's preparing for that. Amen. Amen. 
Just step up to that mic. Yes. All right. We had a couple. I was going back through some that I had um, I had jotted down that we got through email, so I wanted to, to bring these out today, too. Um, someone said that um, their heart rate was really, really high, and they were watching the 11th hour, and when music started, their heart rate started to stabilize. Wow. Yes. Hallelujah. And then another one had said that... Um, their transmission in their car got paid for after tithing to the 11th hour. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> so, That's yes. awesome. And um, another partner that tithes to uh, the 11th hour said uh, their daughter and granddaughter came back and rededicated their life to the Lord. Praise yes. Hallelujah. Yes, and we had someone that, that said they had an eight-month-old uh, central heating and air unit that wouldn't work. They tried to fix it, but it wouldn't work. So the Lord told her to tithe, and the heating and air came on back immediately. <laughs> wow. <Amen>. Wow. <laughs> so it fixed itself. Yes, the Lord it fixed it. <laughs> you know, you got scripture on that because, uh, you know, when Peter was, was taken as prisoner, and he was bound in chains and, by, and put in prison by four quaternions of soldiers, about 16 soldiers, when he stood up, the chains fell off. When he got to the gate of the city, the Bible said the gate opened of its own accord. Didn't say an angel opened it. It said the gate opened of its own. It recognized that power, and it just opened. So, you know, natural things around you are made to respond to the anointing of the Holy Ghost. I want to say this before I give Chris to the mic. That we kept saying, the Lord quickened to me and said, you kept saying, Norway, Norway. And there was a reason I kept saying that. The Lord said, there's a reason. And I want to give this word that, that Norway, uh, we pray right now for Norway. Norway, you stand strong. Whatever's going to try to come against you, whatever's going to try to, to, to overpower you, something about Norway, you're going to not only put it down, but you will go over the top. Go ahead and start saying it. I will make it. I will go over the top. I am going to make it, and no weapon formed against Norway will prosper. Hallelujah. 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 So we need to begin to say that. Ireland is in my thinking right now. I heard Ireland. Ireland with a rich heritage, like Norway, but Ireland with a rich heritage of evangelism, of the power of God, I, I, Ireland, no weapon formed against Ireland will prosper in the name of Jesus. God, raise up new evangelists and powerful ministers in Ireland and Norway. Hallelujah. Lord God, I ask you now to begin to raise up 50 evangelists in California. Raise up 50 evangelists in California. After the order of Mario Marilla. Raise them up, Lord, that they will, will have that fire and begin to turn that state. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Texas. Texas. Texas is very proud of its star that it puts on everything. The Lord says, like the bright and morning star, I'm going to smile on Texas. And I will make Texas a spearhead that will stand just like the Alamo against tyranny. And I'm going to raise them up, and you will see a change coming even more so in Texas, says the Lord. And no weapon formed against Texas will prosper in Jesus' name. Faintly in my thinking, I hear Finland coming up in my mind. Finland, something about water, something about that. I, I, it's, it's a long way from me, but there's partners, must be partners in Finland because I can sense that in my spirit. Lord God, right now we, I ask you for an infusion of the blood of Jesus in Finland. Lord God, that it will be an infusion there. Lord, that this revival will swirl and swirl like a whirlwind there. And it will begin to pick up all the debris and remove it 
from Finland that righteousness raise its head to prevail. Hallelujah. Now we send out a wave of the blood of Jesus directly against the throne of Satan. Directly against his minions and the throne of Satan. That this blood, this rolling wave of the blood of the Lord Jesus will now become a wall like a standard against the enemy. And it will just raise up and stop this move and this push. Yes, Lord. Show the world, Lord, by shaking Congress in this nation. Shake it, Lord. Shake the House and the Senate. Lord God, let there be a shaking until the Supreme Court is big Blair-eyed watching and they grab the robes of righteousness and begin to move in a righteous motion. Let it be seen, Lord, and shine a bright light upon the true seed of the present.